and we are the advocates for our children in our schools, really pushed to get us on the list. And we almost didn't make it, but because what happens is the, the other lower performing schools, some of the other lower performing schools, um, they're already qualified as a STAR school or a TIIG school or um, or I think it's TIIBG school. There's mm. other funding sources going into those schools. We're still a low qualifying school or a low scoring school, but we hadn't received any of those extra supports that the other parts, many other schools in the district were receiving that were low scoring schools. The children benefit from the chance to do the music and the arts and the gardening and the PE. And not only beyond the relationships they're building with those adults, but just accessing that, that part of their brain, getting them involved in school enrichment wise and that's QEIA has allowed us to do that because it's freed up that money to pay for that because we're no longer prioritizing with with our funds our, our fundraising funds we're not just prioritizing class size reduction because QEIA is taking care of that. We're able to have these smaller class sizes so there are fewer kids and their needs are being met and they're not acting out. They're getting what they need. In that way too, we've been able to implement curriculum more appropriately so that everybody is getting the education that they need and differentiated education to meet their exact needs. With 23 students, we actually have enough space to move around, to have diverse instruction that's not just sit in, sit in your chair, listen to the directions, do the work. I think that I can diversify my, my teaching a lot more because I have a little bit more time that is allotted for each child. I can pay more attention to their levels and where they're at. It's easier to manage, you know, it's, it's common sense when you say, when people say class size reduction, how does that work? That shouldn't work. You know, well, that doesn't work. Why would that work? A good teacher could teach 35, 40 kids. When research shows that it's the relationship that matters, that, that children are willing to perform if they have a positive relationship in the classroom and they are willing to do the work of the teacher. It's important to me to build a one-on-one -on -one relationship with students and to really get to know students and know their interests. And even with the small class size, it's hard or it's difficult to, to make that connection with every single student. So I can imagine with even more how much more difficult it can be. A lot of what we focus on, focus on is how do we, through teaching, how do we improve those relationships too? How are we concurrently doing the same things, improving relationships while teaching so that the children can kind of take off? One of the things QEIA has provided is um, for a half day every month the teachers are released for a grade level release to do planning and work around some focal students and um, um, they know that that is, you know, that's a good chunk of money that for substitutes to cover their classrooms so they know that that's part of it and they value that time. Our teacher's time is limited, maybe, maybe two hours a day that we have besides when the kids are here. And during that time we may be grading papers, correcting, doing paperwork, or we may be able to have some creative space to create a lesson or create you know, a custom lesson for the needs of the students. Because of QEIA, um, we've been able to direct other monies that our school raises and um, hire an intervention teacher for kindergarten through second grade and an intervention teacher for third through fifth grade. Um, and those teachers work with students who do not have an IEP and are not getting any other services, but are just falling a little bit behind. And so we've been able to fund these two positions and those people, they, they've really been able to help us help those students really catch up in their classwork. It's made an enormous difference. And it's really, we've really noticed it in the test scores um, with helping the kids that are just the below basic getting to proficient. Um, that's where we've seen a huge growth in, in terms of test scores, um, and we credit that to those intervention teachers. The, the fact that there's less children in the after school or in the fourth and fifth grade classes, also beyond the relationship building, the teachers are coming out with more energy because they've they're not spending expending so much energy every day with having so many students. Um, I'm having less discipline problems to deal with um, as a result of students not getting their needs met in class. Um, and so the energy, we've been able to really transition to putting energy into our after school programs as well and making sure that those are high quality and having a quality staff there. And um, the children see that as an extension of their school day or part of their school day. And we're able to really have high quality after school programs where the children then again are happy with what they're doing and they feel like they're part of this community and they, they really enjoy. And they don't, dis they don't separate the school day. For the most part, the school day with the after school program, it's all 
they went to school today, you ask a child, and when they go home, how was your school today? How was school? And they say, oh, my gosh, we did this drumming class, or we did this comic strip book class. And you say, oh, when did that happen? Oh, in the after-school program. Or we did poetry with Miss Sally, and it was, when did that happen? Oh, that was during school. You know, they, they just talk about their full school day as, as a whole.